Hey friends, hey family, uh, it's Yom Tara on the uh, Zadok calendar. And so I just kind of wanted to go over briefly um, what I feel Yahuwah has given me uh, to share concerning that. Of course, we're going to start out in the word. Um, but first, let's, uh, let's go to prayer. All right, let's do this. Uh, Yahuwah, we praise you and we thank you for today. We praise you and we thank you for your holy days, for your set apart times, for your people, Father, for their meaning, and for giving us these times, Father, that we can uh, prepare ourselves, um, dress rehearsal, if you will, for life in your in your kingdom. And uh, we just praise you and we thank you. We pray that you would open some eyes open some ears to your truth and open our hearts to your word, Father, and uh, as we dig in. And I pray these things in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen and amen. We are at, uh, where are we opening to? Uh, looks like we're already there. Uh, we're, we're in uh, Leviticus uh, chapter 23, and we're going to be looking at um, verses 23 through 25. And it says... And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasharel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Shabbat, a memorial of blowing of shofars. Holy assembly. 25. Uh, ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer... An offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. And you're going to find uh, when we turn over here to Numbers, uh, we're going to Numbers 29, uh, 1 through 6. It's going to go a little more detail. So let's head over there. There we go, 29. What did I say? Yes. 1 through 6. <clears throat> it says, And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, ye shall have a holy assembly. You shall do no servile work. It is Yam Teruah unto you. And ye shall offer an ascending smoke offering for a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. One black bullock. Sorry about that. One young bullock. One ram and seven lambs of the first year without blemish. And their oblation shall be of flour mingled with oil, three-tenth deals for a bullock, and two-tenth deals for a ram, and one-tenth deal for one lamb throughout the seven lambs, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering to make an atonement for you. Beside the ascending smoke offering of the month, and his oblation, and the daily ascending smoke offering, and his oblation, and their drink offerings according unto their manner for a sweet savor, a sacrifice made by fire unto Yahuwah. And so we were at an assembly today, and we were discussing this, and there was some interest in the sacrifices. And just kind of thinking about that. I was like, what do we do with that? Um, so I, I kind of felt the Father put it on my heart. And so we're going to turn over to uh, Psalm 51. Let me see if my tabs are working here today. There's Job. Proverbs. And before that, there we go, Psalms. Yep. All right. Tele, Telehim. Uh, 51. There we go. And it looks like 15. Oh, Adonai, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you desire not sacrifice, else would I give it. You delight not in a sinning smoke offering. The sacrifices of Elohim are a broken ruach, broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O Elohim, you will not despise. And so I was like, oh, I know I thought, I thought I heard that somewhere else, you know. And so then I was like, I have. Uh, so it's in Hebrews. Um, 
and there's a lot on this subject in Hebrews for anybody who's interested in um, for anybody who's interested in the sacrifices, not just for Yom Terah, but the sacrifices. Um, just you know, we pretty much we don't do them anymore because Yahusha was the sacrifice, and then there there are those. Um, that hold to an Ezekiel and some other passages and scriptures um, claiming that there will be sacrifices again in the millennial kingdom. Um, but those are going to be more of a memorial uh, type of sacrifice at that time. We're not going into that today. I'm just bringing that up so that you can run down those rabbit trails and chase out those studies if you want to. I may do something more on that later. But today I just thought this was cool because Hebrews, a lot of people attribute that to the Apostle Paul that he wrote that. And there are many of those who pervert <laughs> what the Apostle Paul was saying many times. Um, I think I had 10, 5 through 8. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, 10. Yeah. So here we are. So where, if, okay, supposing... Uh, Paul was the one who wrote Hebrews, okay? Where did he get his material? Because he wasn't creating up new stuff, okay? So we just read out of the Psalms uh, about that. Now let's check out here. We're in Hebrews 10, verse 5. Wherefore, when he came into the world, he said, In sacrifice and offering, you would have no delight, but a body have you prepared me. In ascending smoke offerings and sacrifices for sin, you have had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the rolls of the sepher as written of me to do your will, O Elohim. Above, when he said, Sacrifice and offering, and ascending smoke offerings, and offering for sin, you would have no delight, neither had pleasure therein, which are offered by the priestly regime. I mean, so there's your double confirmation. Um, this is really awesome. And so I just suggest that you just read Hebrews, like the whole book of it. I might even do a video where I just read Hebrews, all right, and try not to chase any rabbits. But today we're gonna try to stay on, on target. So I brought those verses up today at the assembly and what was laid on my heart, because I was reading Leviticus and um, I realized I didn't have an offering made by fire. I did cook a really large roast, and um, I realized that a lot of the offerings in the Old Testament were brought before the people, and a portion of that was given um, to Yahuwah, and then a portion to the priests, and then the people ate the rest of it. Um, so that's what they did a lot. A lot of the offerings were food. Um, so I felt like, I felt like, you know what? For today, in 2022, your offering um, is, is, is what you bring then to the assembly to share um, with other believers before the Father. Um, my thoughts. My thoughts. Um, and so I, I feel like I did bring an offering. Um, right now, the sacrificial system is not in play. And I'm not a farmer, so I don't have sheeps to slaughter or cows to slaughter to take. Um, but I did go to the meat market and I had a fairly nice size roast and I took that. And I think that, um, you know, for looking at the symbolic meanings of everything, I think that that's where we're at for today. Until I get a farm and then I might be able to slaughter. I'm still not going to sacrifice it, but I might slaughter it and take something uh, from my own flock, I guess. Um, I'm excited um, to possibly do some kind of uh, husbandry. I think that'd be really cool. Um, kind of looking at the Amish now like, man, I'm not, I'm not really high on, they got, like, I'm not looking at them and thinking, man, um, I like their dress code, but I'm looking at them like, man, okay, these people, they work a lot, but I work a lot now anyways, but they're working for themselves and they really do, for the most part anyways, uh, looking in from the outside, appear to have a piece about the fact that they're pretty much self-sufficient and I'm pretty sure 
Uh, that's what Yahuwah wants for us. All right, we've chased that rabbit hole. Uh, or, well, actually, we chased that rabbit down the hole long enough. So um, I wanted to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's see if we can find that one. There's 2 Corinthians, so first should be right there somewhere. Into chapter 15. And I just wanted to to speak on um, a lot of the the feasts uh, actually represent things, uh, prophetic things. Most of them, a lot of them have already happened. But uh, Yom Terah is foreshadowing an event, and that's the event we're going to look into right now. Um, and it hasn't happened yet, so it's really kind of cool. So it was 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 and 52. It says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the shofar shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. That sounds pretty cool. So we're going to head over to First Thessalonians now. First Thessalonians. There we are. And it's going to be... Where did I write it? There it is. Uh, chapter 4. Yes. And verse 16. For Yahuwah himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the shofar of El Ohim. And the dead in Mashiach shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet Yah in the air. And so shall we ever be with Yahuwah. So now I know a lot of people love to jump to this, um, the rapture. Oh, the rapture is coming and we celebrate the rapture. And I just tell you, I mean, I, one of the things I like to do is I like to kind of look in scripture and see if scripture explains itself. And so we're going to go over to Matthew now. We're going to keep this event in mind, though. A couple things I like. Um, I like that this is happening with the blast of the shofar. Um, it sounds a lot like trumpets. Um, Feast of trumpets, anyway. Uh, Matthew 24. So we're heading over there. What do we got? and verse 31 but all right i'm gonna read 31 but then we're gonna go back here so 31 says and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a shofar and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other okay so i mean are you starting to understand what this is foreshadowing what the yom Torah, what uh, the Feast of Trumpets is foreshadowing. Now let's back up to verse 29 because you know, all the pre-rapture people, right? We're not going to be here. We're not going to endure um, all the wrath and all this hardship and stuff like that. And if you have the seal of Yahuwah, okay, then you're, you're going to be protected from his wrath. All right, but just, let's just look at 29 real quick and we'll do a study into the seal of Yahuwah and the mark of Yahuwah uh, later, but that's what we all want, right? If you don't know what it is, you don't want to tune into that one so you can find out. But in uh, Matthew twenty four twenty nine, it says, immediately after, after what? After the tribulation of those days. What comes after? Well, let's read further, okay? Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall the sun be darkened, 
and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the son of Adam in heaven. And then shall the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the son of Adam coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a shofar. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Okay, so did you hear that? Okay, so all this, um, what we're foreshadowing with uh, Yom Terah happens after, according to uh, you know, Matthew 24, 29. Okay, so when, when, I mean, I like to think of it as the second exodus. And there are some great studies on that, and we might dive into that, learn a little bit more together, okay? Um, when I get all these people, oh, I can't wait for the rapture, I can't wait for the rapture, and, you know, they just think that, <laughs> you know, you ever talk to them? Uh, you know, some of these people um, that, you know, got, you know, they're just confused, all right? Uh, but they think that, you know, all the, the, the rapture is going to happen any day. And, and we look at the, the hour that we're in now and the things that are happening and the biblical prophecy that's being fulfilled every day. Okay. And it's just like, um, you know, if I was a pre-rapture, you know, type of person, you know, I'd be like, when is this rapture going to happen? I mean, how bad does it got to get? Um, you know. I'm just saying this. I'm saying this because I care about you. There, there's no pre-rapture, okay? We're in it to win it, all right? Toughen up, buttercup, all right? <laughs> the most important thing that we can do is prepare, all right? And that's what celebrating Yom Terah is all about. It's a foreshadowing, and it's a dress rehearsal so that we're prepared when the king comes, okay? And we know when the king comes. Um... Well, what's going to happen? Let's turn to, uh, well, actually, this time we'll start out with, uh, we'll start off with Paul. Let's go to Romans 14, 11, all right? Let's, let's find out. So. Romans 14, 11 reads, For it is written, as I live, says Yahuwah, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to Elohim. So there's, there's, there's our guy, Paul, the Apostle Paul here. Okay, and once again, where did he get his material? Was he making stuff up? Let's turn back to Isaiah 45 and verse 23. Isaiah 45, 23. I've sworn seven oaths by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. That unto me every knee shall bow. There you go. Where's Paul taking it from? Right here. That unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear seven oaths. Paul, okay, was a student of the writings that were there long before he was ever there. Okay. So when he was preaching, he wasn't preaching from the New Testament. He's preaching from what was already available. Okay. Um, so let's not get Paul confused. And then I kind of um, I kind of wanted to end with um, a verse that I've been including in a lot of um, my videos lately. And I just feel like it's 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 powerful. It's a good, it's a good verse. And it has a shofar in it, so I'm like, this is it feels like It feels to me like a Feast of Trumpets type of verse, okay? Um, and it's Joel, uh, Joel, uh, ver uh, chapter 2, verse 1. It says, Blow ye the shofar in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahuwah comes, for it is nigh at hand. Brothers, sisters, friends, family, 
the hours late. Many of you are still asleep. You're wondering, man, what's, what is Rich even talking about? Some of you are starting to wake up. You're in that process. I want to pray for you. It, it is closer than we all think. And now more than ever, it's important for us to get our lives right. You know, um, we're 10 days away from the Day of Atonement. In these 10 days, a lot of people will fast. They will afflict themselves. They will teshuvah, which is repent, turn around. That's what we need. We need to repent. We need to get our focus back on the Father. And um, that's what His holy days do. You know, a, a lot of you are still um, in the process of coming out of um, the, the pagan holidays that the Catholic Church put on you and, and made you think that, oh, you know, like say, for example, you know, the 25th of December is, you know, <laughs> Yahusha's birthday, you know, and, and that somehow it would be acceptable for him, even if we were called to celebrate his birthday, to then do so by honoring him with a feast of pork. <laughs> oh, man, how silly I was, um, how blind and how asleep I was. Um, it's not time for that. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up, start reading the word, asking serious questions about the word and start pursuing truth, start pursuing the father. You know, we blew the shot, the shofar today, <clears throat> screamed out hallelujah. Really hoping that he, that he remembers us, remembers the covenant that he has with us. And then, um, spend these next, 10 days before David's home and in a serious um, state of repentance before the Father and seeking Him. Uh, he's awesome and He's worthy. Let's pray. Let's pray together. Yahuwah, we praise you and we thank you. Um, we blew the shofars today. We screamed hallelujah. We've looked to your word. This is one of your high Shabbats. And we feasted uh, with your family. He said, who, who, who is my family? You, you were there. And, and they were telling you that your mother was calling you. And you said, who, who is my mother? And who are my brothers and sisters? But those that have my commands and obey them. Father, I want to pray for my family now my family that has your commands and obeys them. I want to pray that you bless them, Father. I want to pray that you manifest yourself to them and reveal to them what it is that you would have them to do in your kingdom over these next 10 days. And Father, for, for those people out there that haven't stepped into that relationship with you, Father, I pray that you continue to draw them I pray that you would Romans 5, 8 them. I pray that you would open their eyes to your truths. Father, I pray that you open their ears so they can hear your word. Father, I pray that you would heal their hearts. We're in a time of tribulation now. Many people are confused in their mind. Many people, their hearts are broken. Father, I want to pray for them. I want to pray healing on them. I want to pray that you confirm your word with your signs and wonders and do works that only you can do in the lives of the people, Father, that are hearing this message and that are turning to you, turning away from the world, turning to you with true repentance, believing, Father, believing. We praise you and thank you. In the name of Yahusha HaMashiach, and in his faith, we pray these things. Amen. I want to thank you guys for hanging with me. And uh, I, just, I just want to tell you to be a good cheer. Be a good cheer if you're going through hard times. And um, if, you, if you like this kind of content, um, I would appreciate it if you liked this video. And if you want to hear more. Uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button 
and that bell icon is going to let you know when I drop my latest video. And if you have some fruitful words to say, um, please put those in the comment section on my YouTube feed. And that is also going to be a blessing of encouragement and edification for anybody that reads those. So I appreciate all those people who do those things. And I just want to say this for you in closing. Yah bless you and keep you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs>